I've never known a love so steady Even gold won't turn your tide We flow together like an ocean Every low and every high And I would have you anyway, dear Any way your heart could bear Even if you had to leave me I'd always be waiting here Even when we are apart I will keep you in my heart And I wouldn't change a thing Even if I were the king sunset But every day I see it rise I never thought it could be better Until I saw it in your eyes Even when we are apart I will keep you in my heart I will hold the world at bay Just to see Time begins to fade I will love you just the same And I wouldn't change a thing Even if I were the king Check, check, mic check, 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 mic check. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live stream. We're taking a little bit of a break from our normal kind of crazy, wacky, blind tastings, 
the the sort of thing that I've been doing, like uh, going into a liquor store and buying up a bunch of bourbon and tasting them, taking a little bit of a break from that. Why? Well, because, you know, listen, folks, I've, uh, I'm backdropped and I've got so many boxes. These are just a few of the boxes here that I've got today to open. But I'm really, really behind. Um, the dishes need doing. The boxes are piling up. Um, and so I figured, you know, when I asked the membership, I was like, hey, what are some ideas for tonight's live stream? Because I got to I gotta continue feeding the beast. I got to keep doing these live streams. Wednesday night especially. Wednesday night especially is kind of like my night. 6.30, man. You can guarantee it. We're going to have a live stream every Wednesday at 6.30. Um, Fridays, I think, is kind of kind of hit and miss. Like, you know, it's usually about how I feel and all that. But Wednesdays you know you can bank on it we're going to do the live stream so what um what we're going to, what the membership had suggested uh members suggested that uh, i taste i taste stuff that's you know i open boxes and i used to do a little segment called what's in the box and you know i stopped doing them because you know, they were just i don't know i know it's a, a youtube thing people like seeing people open boxes and what's inside them I just can never really get into it like uh, so maybe maybe this is where you know things change up a little bit for me and I've got one two three four five I have five boxes here and these have all came this week I mean I get I get anywhere from you know five to 100 you know boxes in a week depending on what what season it is but basically for you know for those who don't know i've been covering spirits and wine and spirits for uh the majority of this century you know i'm doing this this list of uh uh best bourbons of the century so far and it's gotten me to realizing like i've been doing this for a long time and there was a time where you know we couldn't we i'd have so much wine in the house we couldn't even move around like we'd had to we had to give the wine away um, spirits was never, there's not as many releases in spirits as there is in wine. So it's not that big, as much of a big deal. But until I, the word got out that I hated vodka and I hated flavored whiskey, every vodka company would send me something and every flavored whiskey would send me something. So, um, all of that is, all of that is to say that I get a shitload of whiskey and, you know, uh, I don't drink it all. I mean, I try to taste it and, you know, do reviews on it, but um, I'm trying to also get away from doing reviews on media samples. I'm trying to do reviews on things that I actually bought. Uh, I don't think I can ever fully get away from the media samples, but I want, I would like to get myself in a place where if I'm doing the a review on, I don't know, let's just say, just throw one out there, like a wild turkey, any wild turkey product. You know, I'm very glad to say, like, the majority of the wild turkey products that I have reviewed uh, of late, I bought. You know, so I'm trying to trying to get away from the media samples, but they still come and, you know, it's part it's part of the profession. Getting getting free whiskey as a whiskey writer is, is you know, I've always akin it to, um, you know, a sports writer getting to go to the Super Bowl. You know, it's, you know, I know a lot of people see this stuff as free samples and all that. But for me, it's actually work. So, and tonight you're gonna get to see me open the box with with this guy right here. Uh, you know, might as well answer, take some questions here. This question's coming in from Gravity on uh, Periscope. Uh, do you hate Jack Daniel's Tennessee Fire? Do you maybe like it just a little bit? You know, no, I I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I mean, I'm I'm a purist through and through, and a curmudgeon when it comes to these these flavored whiskeys. And I will say that I respect I respect Fireball. I don't like it. I respect Fireball because Fireball is a is an incredible. You know, I mean, you you can't deny the business success that it's had, and you can't deny that Fireball has built some warehouses of Buffalo Trace. And what I respect about Fireball is that is it's a new it's a brand it's and it's not taking advantage of a bourbon brands like Equity, 
whereas Jack Daniels uh, Fire is taking advantage of the Jack Daniels name instead of calling it, you know, some rebranding it as something else, you know. And so that is um, that uh, that's just a little bit of my thought on there. It's, it's, it's more of a positioning thing. And I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the flavored whiskeys. I understand that you like cinnamon whiskey, uh, but um, it's just not my bag. And I'm always going to be honest about that. And Tony Watson says, well, fireball isn't bourbon. That's right. Fireball is actually made with Canadian whiskey. So that's true. Uh, Andrew Clark says, uh, I'm really hoping for some Wheatley's in your box, uh, Wheatley's vodka in your boxes. Listen, Andrew, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're getting ornery again on me. You're getting ornery. Hey, look who's in town, everybody. It's bourbon night. My, my favorite, uh, couple on YouTube, Chad and Sarah. I hope, uh, hope you guys are doing well. If y'all are not, if you are not subscribing to It's Bourbon Night, you are missing out on two talented young individuals. So make sure you're checking them out. Uh, Gra Gravity's gonna. We're gonna keep this conversation about cinnamon whiskey and everything. Uh, Fireball tastes like Jolly Rancher candy. Yuck. All right. I don't think I've actually ever had Fireball to be honest with you. So uh, before we gotta get into the boxes. You know, I'd love your love your comments and feedback on some of the stuff I'm doing uh, for Bourbon Heritage Month. It is Bourbon Heritage Month. It's September. This is the month that, you know, bourbon is meant to celebrate and with festivals after festivals. And we do a lot of cool stuff normally, but COVID 2020, blah, 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 blah. You know, so I'm trying to actually do some cool stuff that you all can enjoy. I'm trying to do a video every day of the no i am doing a video every day there's no trying about it uh a video every day uh, celebrating the the bourbons of the century so far so i got to thinking about this and there's a handful of critics who have actually been been around long enough and have been tasting long enough that we can say that we've tasted all the releases all the major releases and most of the like new products that have come out uh paul packelt is one Jim Murray is another uh, John Hansel, but he kind of he, he 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 retired, but I still I know he's I know he's active. There's not many of us out there who have been tasting this long. Lou Bryson's another one, and so uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a bourbons of the century so far because you you have to do these lists on an even number or like a 25 or something like that. So so I thought you know 20 20 years is a pretty good Pretty good haul. Um, pretty good haul on the next, um, you know, for, for a century. So I feel like you have some good, we can have some good data in there. And definitely, definitely feel like, um, you know, I'm filming it on this one, you know. So love your love your thoughts, your comments on, uh, on what you think of the bourbon so far. I've already dropped number 30 and I've dropped 29. So 28 drops tomorrow. And you might even still be able to find uh, 28 on the shelves. So if you want to see that, if you want to check it out, and we're really close to 10,000 subscribers, I'd love for it if you kind of join the community here and uh, join us in these regular live streams. But keep those questions coming in. I'm going to be checking uh, checking stuff out. So Devin here is all right. We already got uh, Devin over here saying, like, Old Scout is overrated. So if you watched that video, you saw that uh, number 30 was my pick for for uh, Smooth Ambler's Barrel Picks, which is Old Scout. From 2006 to 2011, I'm telling you, those were money barrels. You know, After that, you started seeing it slip a little bit, but those were the money years for those, def most definitely. Okay, so looky here. Jeff is uh, having some friends over. And he's going to do a tasting based on my blind tasting. Old Forester 1920 versus Rare Breed. Ooh, I'm excited to see the results on that, Jeff. Be sure to, you know, post it and tag me. So that's awesome. So let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and try to open these boxes while also where you can see them. So this is... Um, it's it says like agave on here. It 
one of the things about getting a lot of packages is you definitely get um, you definitely get a lot of stuff like this that junks up the office. So I hate these things, but you know that's all part of packing. So, Netta, distilled from agave. Um, let's see here. It's from Oaxaca. They have a lot of information on the back. So, you can see here. And I just dropped it. Just dropped it. Look at that. I think I, I think I opened the thing up all backwards, too. Okay, so here we go. Here is a... Yeah, so with so a little mezcal. Um, spirits are songs you can taste, and this mezcal is a jazzy free three-piece that sets the tone for a long, lounging night. The full gamut is on display here. Along with, you know what, that's just all marketing stuff. So, um, here we go. Not really getting a lot of information on here. So look at that. Pretty cool little, uh, pretty cool little label. I don't speak Spanish. But I will crack into. Um, I'm gonna crack into this. So this is a. So this is imported by Pueblo de Sabor. I know that they are. I think they're a relatively new importer. At least they're new to me. So two time uh, double distillation. Let's give this a shot. Definitely some some sweetness. Um, and I'm trying to. I don't want to butcher the pronunciation. La lacora, la lacora. So I'm gonna I'm gonna type in. I'm gonna type in what I am tasting here. All right, hopefully 
That sheds a little light. There we go. So here we are. That's what I'm tasting. I'll be able to... Um, it's really sweet, smoky. Sweet and smoky and some tomato juice, like a pepper, a little bit of a pepper there. Yeah, I dig that. That's fun. That's fun and definitely definitely something to to play around with all right so let's go on to the next one why well, I, I screwed up that whole i screwed that whole thing up i don't think i did the deboxing you know i don't think i did the boxing right but that box is going to go over here more mess now let's go back to the um the whole th the next box here um so it's bourbon night asks can you open a box without thinking of seven of course the movie seven is where they open a box and find uh, a woman's head in there Fred. <laughs> I love this. Somebody sent me some uh, pop tarts. Now they sent me some uh, pop pop tarts, right? Because of um, in a recent uh, tasting, I had said that I got a lot of pop tarts, and. And their whiskey. And this is their other whiskey. So this is the proprietor. So this is the, um, the second thing. This is the whiskey. Um, I reviewed the sister whiskey here, the um, their batch one. This is Lucky Seven Proprietor. Let me type that in for you guys. And the reason why they sent me the Pop-Tarts is because at the end of the show, I was like, I really could go for a Pop-Tart. Bill Woods asked, uh, when will someone send me free whiskey? Well, you know, it's not all it's cracked up to be, to be honest with you. It's not all it's cracked up to be. So 117.3 proof. It's a big whopper. Okay. So this is what we'll be tasting here. Whoa, speaking of seven, Michael Smith caught that on on um on Facebook. Very good. 
You know what? I'm going to have a Pop-Tart, though. They sent a Pop-Tart. And this is a brown sugar Pop-Tart. This is sounding really good right now. If I, Drew uh, asked a question, if I say I'm drinking fantastic pancake syrup, what is the first whiskey that comes to mind? Hmm. I don't know. I can't. Right now, all I can think about how good is this Pop-Tart. It's totally going straight to my hips. Hmm. That's a good Pop-Tart. By the way, do not try this at home. I am a professional. So, this smells like, um, a lot of brown sugar. It smells like it's, um, like finely toasted oak. Like you can smell the, you can smell the oak getting toasted, um, you know, the tip of a marshmallow that's, you know, been in the fire toasting. We got toasted uh, marshmallow. Devin Patel says, untoasted Pop-Tarts are for sinners. Well, Devin, I am a sinner. Oh, man. Ooh. Oh, that's some bitching good right there. Wow. It just makes me want to eat more of the Pop-Tart, too. So, in today's What's in the Box, a Pop-Tart and Lucky 7 pairing. Wow. This is beautiful. If this is wrong... I don't want to know what's right. Mm. So thank you to Lucky Seven. I mean, the whiskey's great, but sending the Pop Tarts, you like made my day. You make totally made my day. Because Jack, I'm going to let me get Pop-Tarts anymore. But in terms of this whiskey, um, it's really, it's got a lot of big, deep, it's got a lot of deep, like, um, sugary notes. Uh, there's there's some smoke in there. But think of a, think of an overcharred marshmallow. You got that smoke there on the on the tip. You get inside, it's all that good gooiness from the marshmallow. That's what this reminds me of. Oh, shit. Jacqueline's watching me, and she just caught me eating a Pop-Tart. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Mmm. All right, that was um, that was quite good. That was really really good. So, so this is my second tasting of a lucky seven. And I think um, I think they're doing a good job bottling a uh, good whiskey. And they, I think they knocked it out of the park with this one too. Really good. All right, so back to the boxes. Here we go.
That's uh, a thing of me. This is from one of my private tasting bookings. So I don't know what's going on here. Ah, oh. this is interesting. This was um, this was from one of my private tastings I did. Uh, I did for a company, and I guess they sent me a box. But I just I taste I just tasted right out of the um, out of the bottle. So I won't be opening these. Although, oh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof there, All right? Um, okay. So this is definitely not the sort of thing that I normally would drink. So Yeah. Here we go with this guy. Earl Grey Vanilla. It's a cocktail. And then cranberry orange. <clears throat> Oh, these are mixes. This is an Earl Grey syrup. An Earl Grey syrup. Um, and a cranberry orange syrup. You know, I think I opened it and uh, I think it's great. And I'm sure it's great, but I'm not going to taste it because you can't really judge a uh, cocktail syrup. By itself, you got to make a cocktail, and I'm obviously not equipped for cocktail making right now. So, next in our final box, so we've had two boxes that were kind of, kind of, um, bombers. And then, let's see this guy. I think anytime you see something from a company called Skunk Brothers, you don't get too excited. This is uh, called Smoke Jumper. So, this is the Smoke Jumper. Now, I know, I recall what this is. This is the uh, whiskey that's connected to the. Um, it's connected to the people who fight wildfires. So, really, I think it, I think it actually raises money for them. Yeah. Uh, so the, I'll just read to you on the back. This sweet and smoky bourbon was crafted in dedication to the courageous firefighters who willingly risked their lives jumping into the inferno to protect our forests and keep us safe. Oh, boy. It, so that part's really nice. That's good. Aged in new oak for 24 hours. 24 hours. Uh, 
Yeah, it's really dark for being only a day old. So, if you've read my book, Bourbon Curious, you uh, you know I kind of make fun of uh, people and like the marketing and all that when it comes to um, aging. So let's find out. I mean, you know, I hate I hate this because I love the I love the cause, right? I love the cause. I love the um, I love the desire to 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 help you know bring on the to help the firefighters but and then you can see if you can zoom in there you can see where it says 24 hours right there so aged in new oak for 24 hours well that's a, a whole lot of notexcited.com. Now, Steve asked a question, why even put that on the label? Uh, it, because they're under federal law to disclose the age if it's under four years old. So... Now, I don't know, I don't have any details on the whiskey. I did just have a pamphlet. Let's see if there's anything in the pamphlet. <sighs> ah, okay. It's a rapid age product. Everything is made in house. We mash, ferment, and distill this bourbon. Once it is ready to age, we put it through what is known as an accelerated aging process. It goes into a barrel and gets rapidly aged. But don't let that fool you. This emerges as an amazingly smooth, delicious tasting bourbon. Okay. Okay, it smells like Play-Doh. Smells like he just opened up a thing of Play-Doh, you know? Uh, the proof is 90. Well... It doesn't suck as bad as I thought it was going to. It actually, um, it's drinkable. I mean, if you want to drink it, but I mean, it does lack flavor, but it doesn't have any of the, you know, flaws. It doesn't have any, it doesn't taste like it has any flaws in there. But it lacks any kind of like, um, you know, any kind of like typical bourbon note. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't imagine you can get much flavor with a 24-hour process. But, you know, I'm not getting turpentine notes. The only, you know, the one flaw I would say is it smells like Play-Doh. And then, you know, it, it just kind of, it just kind of tastes like, um... You know, nothing. I mean, it tastes like it. Ta okay, so if I were to, if the two notes that I do get here, I get like a a left out overnight um, oatmeal, and I get like. Um, you know, definitely alcohol, like a, a sharp alcohol note, and um, some smoke. I mean, that's it. But it's not. It's not that. I mean, for the rapid, you know, in the world of rapid aging, I mean that tastes good. 
but still there's there's not a lot of that rapid aging stuff that you know i would recommend but um again great cause um a great effort to you know inform people about smoke jumpers i support that and i think that's great but the whiskey um doesn't match the cause if you will so just my opinion though go try it for yourself just my opinion Ooh. So Bill Wood says he's rapid aging himself. Listen, Bill, you got to be careful about rapid aging yourself. Um, you know, it gets you in trouble. You don't want to. You don't want to get in too much trouble. Um, Drew asked the question: Which is uh, less of a myth, dry land or rapid aging? Hmm. I don't know. Peter says, yeah, and he smells like Play-Doh. I think he's talking about the, his buddy that was rapid aging. So, <laughs> Hey, keep those questions firing in. Uh, I do have a couple more boxes since I didn't, um, since I did not open the, I didn't drink these two. And I've already had the other ones. You know, I got a clean glass over here. Might as well put it to work. So I'll go grab another box. Here's some, here's some fine, let me get you some fine tunes while we go.
All right, well, we essentially have, um, I'm picking barrels now. So, these, um, for those who are not members, I'm starting a barrel club. And um, we're trying to figure out how to make that work because the YouTube policies don't allow you to uh, solicit the sale of alcohol. So I'm probably going to be moving some stuff over to Patreon here pretty soon. And I'm um, going to have a special barrel club. And this, these are two of the brands I, I requested to get you know check out. So uh, more details on that to come. But let's just say that I need more glasses. So let's play a little more music. in my office. This, this much is true. Okay, so here we go. I have some 80 laws. Now I'm picking a barrel here. Let's write this out here. You see the little bottles that they came in here and my retail uh, my retail partner on this is uh, out of Washington DC and they will be able to uh, ship to people so if you want to make sure that you're in the know and that you're gonna to need to join the, the join whatever community I ended up going with but for now it's um, it is Hop on the YouTube membership. All right, so this is 80 laws, four grain, three plus years. Looks like they're all three years old. Now, 80 laws is out of Colorado. Nice, um, nice. Nice little uh, distillery there, uh, the Laws uh, Whiskey House. So the retailer I've uh, partnered with, and they're also helping me with like my private tastings, is uh, Liquor Express or Modern Liquors out of uh, Washington D.C. Really good guys over there. Definitely did not expect to be doing a barrel pick out of all this. Uh, Fred Smurf says, uh, USPS will not knowingly ship uh, alcohol. 
And that's why I've uh, partnered with someone who is legally able to uh, ship alcohol through a um, through UPS and UPS and FedEx. See, Modern Liquors has a has a license that allows them to ship, which is why I partnered with them. So, and you know they can sell other stuff too. So, here we go. Um, nose is grainy. Nose is grainy. Nose is grainy. Nose is less grainy. So what I'm essentially doing here is um, I'm going to be able to, what I do is, is I go through a process. Picking a barrel is a very different process than breaking it down and critiquing it. Picking a barrel is, um, is, a, is a, so, so different. And it is, it's about... To me, it's all about trying to, you know, find like uh, the, the flavor or like where that whiskey is going, you know, because there's always a couple days still left in the barrel and you wonder like, mm, what are what's going to be like tomorrow? But, um, you know, you you try not to, you know, I try not to have my critic hat on, but rather kind of like my what will people like hat on. It's a very different hat. So all of these nosed in, in kind of a grain central alley, uh, except the last one was a little lighter in grain. Ooh, I like that. Uh, that's got some nice uh, caramelly notes. It's got some, um, um, got some really nice um, cornbread in there. That's tasty. Barrel 1280. It's real tasty. I don't like this one. This one's got like a, a negative um, aftertaste. Got kind of like a... Uh, Kind of like, you know, have you ever had a piece of gum that was like in your mouth for too long and it gets like that kind of chemically gross grossness? This one has that. It has like that overdone bubble gum. Mmm. Ooh, 1320 is yummy too. You know, it's interesting... And tasting these, they're so different. They're so like, um, they're so grain centric because they are young. But you can, you could, you're seeing like the development of the whiskey. You can see it like it's turning that that grain note is turning from like raw grain to cornbread and some sweetness. So it's really exciting. Um, yeah. Danny Lynn says, uh, there always seems to be one incredibly bad sample when picking barrels. Isn't that the truth? That is always the truth. Mm, man, I really like the way this one smells. So we're definitely eliminating this guy. And this is... Um, it's a three horse race. Speaking of horses, Kentucky Derby's this weekend. And I just want to say, um, it feels really weird having the Derby in September. But, you know, I mean, with everything that's going on, too, it just seems even more weird. I've been a been very introspective lately about what's going on and you know how do I how do I talk to my kids about this stuff and, and you know my interview with Killer Mike I got an interview with Killer Mike coming out on Tuesday and and you know he said some things in there that I and that I think we all need to hear and um, I'm very much excited to to have that have that interview post because 
we're we're in a we're in a strange strange time but i do believe we'll get through this and i do believe that we need to look at each other as americans and respect one another and you know i was taught and raised to respect people and i feel like that's kind of gone away a little bit and, and maybe maybe this is the time where we say you know let's start getting along again okay so it's interesting I'm coming back to that first sample the grains a lot more developed I think it's because the other two the other two feel a little little, little uh, further along I'm knocking this one out growing on me it's growing on me it's like um it's like um sweet and spicy pastry oh last one mm. so i think the i think the barrel 1329 I think this is going to be the better one uh, down the road. Like if this is sitting in the barrel for a couple more years, I bet barrel 1329 is going to pop and be really amazing. But I don't think it has the edge over 1320 um, as a drinker right now. 1320 is ready to go right now, you know. Now I want to do something. I want to compare it to I want to compare it to that lucky 12. Because if I can compare it to um If I can compare it to a whiskey that I know today that I liked. Then I know I will I have something on my hands that I can genuinely recommend. Yeah. This just out drank the um the Lucky 7 which I really liked. So the 113.4 proof uh barrel 1320. That's our that's my barrel pick. That's my barrel pick. Fred Smurf says this is how I avoid drinking alone. Aw. Well, I'm glad that I could be here for you. So, congratulations to AD Laws for really, really putting uh, a fine set of whiskeys out for me to taste. My one of my issues with AD Laws is though is that they, I think they I didn't I, I think there was an issue with a, a cork or something from them I had before. <clears throat> now we have filibuster. So I'll do the edit this little thing here. Uh Devin Patel asked, do you prefer flavors or finish? Oh boy, that you know, I mean, shoot. That is that's like a Sophie's choice question for me. I I think I'm leaning 
I lean toward finish, but it they might be equals, you know? They might be equals. Uh, single estate, single barrel. Looks like this is from 2018, so this is two years old. Uh, Brad Dickey asks, uh, to avoid issues, would it be better to use screw tops or synthetic corks? I'm a big cork fan, but... What happens a lot of times is people want to get fancy. And they do all these glues and everything. And the heat, you know, just rips it up. I'm, um, I do not like synthetic corks. I think synthetic corks are bad, actually. Um, everybody wants to talk about the, the immediacy of it. And they're cheaper. And mother fucker, man, that hurt. This is on there, man. I'm going to give it one more go and then I'm going to take it back to the hot water thing. One, two, three. Ah. That son of a bitch was on there good. Single estate, single barrel, bourbon mash, corn, rye, malted barley, 118 proof. This one's three years old. A bit bitter. A lot of pecan notes in that. Hmm. A lot of pecan notes in that. That's like a. That's like sitting under a pecan tree and just grabbing them and. Chuck, 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 chuck. Second one. A little chocolate. Also, also some pecan notes. Wow. Here we go. Smells like a, a fermentation room. Hmm. This is not even close for me. This third one here is a clear-cut winner. So we're going to go with um, barrel K171. The other two, the other two were just too busy trying to be uh, a pecan tree. Yeah, there's something going on in the chat. There's um, sounds like there's talks of uh, motels and everything, and that reminds me, every time I post a video now, there's like a prostitute uh, or a or like some kind of like porn site or something that instantly comments, and that was the moment. It's like, man, I finally made it. You know the 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 sex spam bots are targeting my channel and, and, and it's and it's like oh god because youtube they can't catch them like they keep 
popping up, you know? And, um, and, and so I have to go in and manually delete it. It's just a pain in the ass. But so, uh, members, I, well, uh, what do you think about a little call in show? Huh? Members, what do you think? You guys feel like a little call in show and, uh, you know, chat it up a little bit more and talk about life and pop tarts. I'll probably eat this whole thing of pop tarts, by the way. But, um, <laughs> Tony Watson says, wait, those hot women don't want to be my friend on Instagram? <laughs> Steve says, I thought you were changing professions. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, so I think we're going to go on to uh, do a members only, um, you know, live stream here in a minute. And, uh, you know, this was uh, this was a different kind of night. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't like doing the opening boxes thing. Um, it doesn't it doesn't feel. I don't like getting I don't like seeing a package. I'm like, I've never heard of this. I don't know that. You know, I it, it just I'm typically you know, pretty good. But I mean, I had no idea I was going to get a cocktail mixer. I mean, I just get so many, I get so much stuff. And maybe if I can, if I can have a little bit of a better setup, I didn't like tonight's setup either. So if you all really, um, if you all really like the, the, the style of the, um, if you like the style of the, uh, of the opening boxes if you like that i'm open to doing more of them and and it's um but at the same time I, I don't really i don't really dig them they're not they're not fun for me they're not creative they're not creative for me like i'm opening a i'm opening a friggin box but if that's what you want you know i'll try to make it more fun but if you guys like that you know I'll, I'll keep trying it. Bill says we like them because um, we don't get them. Jeff is like box openings once a month. That's a good idea. I'll do box openings once a month. I might, I might be, I might cherry pick them a little bit. I, I definitely don't want to be opening. Uh, uh, oh, Devin says I like new or unusual tastings, but not the box. So, yeah, maybe the box. Uh, Maybe I like do a video of me opening the boxes and I set them out and then you guys see that beforehand. I don't know. But anyway, let's jump on over to the members area. Um, I'll be there in a minute, but everybody who's not a member, um, you don't have to be. But I am trying to get to 10,000 subscribers this month. So if you want to click the subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. We're almost there. We're almost there. So I appreciate it. Oh, look at that. My best friend and fraternity brother says, suck it up, buttercup. All right, Sean. <laughs> By the way, Sean, I think, I think I got your package. And Jacqueline started using it as like a door holder. And I didn't catch it until today. Like we've been using this. We've been using a little box to prop up a gate. To keep the dog, the new dog, from running upstairs. And I just noticed that it was from you. So I think that was my birthday present. So thank you. I'll open it later. Okay, everybody. That's going to do it. I will uh, see you guys in the members-only community. But um, we'll see you about Friday for a live stream. And also, tomorrow, you get to see number 28 on the list of best bourbons of the century so far. So... Check it out. Cheers, everybody. Remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers.